Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Driving Digital Stand-Up. I'm Isaac Sokolik, or NY Ike, on Twitter, and I'm super excited. Today on the show, we have Martin Davis from Dunelm Associates. He's currently the CIO at Mevitech, and he's going to explain to us the differences between digital transformation and Industry 4.0 in manufacturing. Let's get started. Martin, it's great to have you. Thank you for joining us on the Driving Digital Standup. It's great to be here, Isaac, and great to chat to you again. So, Martin, you know, we talk a lot about digital transformation, and you and I have worked across multiple industries. Um, digital transformation, largely first known in media and retail, and increasingly more in other industries. Tell us what industry, what the digital transformation means in the manufacturing industry. I think, as, as most people know, digital transformation is about a focus on the customer. And it's how do you actually deliver value for the customer? And how does that then drive yeah, you to do different things in your business? And, and I think from a manufacturing perspective, it's the same meaning from digital transformation. How do you actually deliver more value for the customer? How do you change your business to do that? Um, but uh, the slight difference is, is internally within manufacturing people talk a lot about industry 4.0 and industry 4.0 is really about data and how do you use data to better drive your manufacturing and deliver value through that use of data and through automated processes and automation and other things like that so slightly different meaning of digital transformation in manufacturing but the two are complementary if you think about how a customer is getting value from your business and then you think about how do you translate that? How does manufacturing deliver value through use of data? So that internal driver of value delivers the value to the customer. So you kind of look at it from a perspective of, okay, what does our customer want? Our customer wants your know, high quality products. They want them in a timely manner, et cetera, et cetera. And then your use of data internally in manufacturing through industry 4.0 and other approaches like that is looking at the data to drive that quality and the data to drive your productivity the data to drive that value that then goes to the customer. You know, Martin, uh, uh, when we talk about customers in, in, in manufacturing, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing mostly wholesale, right? Wholesale buyers. And we're living in an, a time when supply chain is an issue. So is part of this, not just quality, but being able to do more just-in-time ordering and knowing that you can get parts delivered when required? Oh, oh definitely, yeah. Supply chain is a big part of this and that whole interlinking from your, your raw materials, your inbound uh, delivery of those through to your manufacturing process, through to your outbound shipping, that whole entire supply chain from end to end to it finally gets to the customer is, is all important. So that information about what's happening in your supply chain so that you can fulfill those customer needs is absolutely crucial to this. And you, you're starting to see uh, more data driven approaches within that so you know if you're saying okay the customer needs this product in a certain time frame okay then you're backing that through your whole supply chain but it's becoming more dynamic supply chain because of the uh, interruptions and the disruption to the supply chain you're having to look at how that data is changing on a daily basis no longer a case of okay we know that that raw material shipping from our supplier is going to take us x weeks to get here then we need a you know, week or two whatever it is to manufacture and then you know however much time to ship to the customer that now will be coming a bit more disrupted and dynamic yeah and you maybe that ship with that product coming in was due to take a month it's now going to take two months so how do you build those things in how do you have more buffers in your supply chain to feed your manufacturing? So your manufacturing plant is actually continued to be yeah, uh, fully occupied. It's not sitting there idle and things like that. So I think that we're seeing a lot more dynamic changes within the supply chain and more dynamic scheduling within the manufacturing driven by this disrupted supply chain. You can no longer rely upon it. Mm. And, and I'm assuming part of this equation whether it's you know the data side or so on the productization side understanding customer demand what they're looking for and fluctuations in demand for certain products is is that part of the equation as well oh, oh certainly is yes and the the trouble is as well with the you know if you look at what's been happening through covid and the disruption not to the supply chain 
But there's also disruption in the marketplace as well. Yes, yeah, some of what you thought was a, a reasonable level of sales mm-hmm. can be going up and down by as much as 100% driven by external factors. And we've seen you know, panic buying cause um, yeah, shortages uh, and other aspects like that. Things that are very disruptive to the marketplace. So we're living in a far more dynamic world, which yeah, used to be a case of, if you think about the automotive world, you think about mm-hmm. just-in-time manufacturing. Yeah, you know, where the vendors are supplying just what's needed for the manufacturing process, just when it's needed, so they can flow straight into the manufacturing plant to produce the vehicles, and the vehicles are out the door. Yeah, we've seen disruption. Let's take chips, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the disruption in the chip manufacturing side of things has led to shutdown of, of manufacturing plants. So it's becoming instead of just in time, it may be just or a form of just in time, but more buffer stock built into that. So that if you do get disruption in the supply chain, you're not closing down your manufacturing. So I think we're seeing these modifications and we're seeing this happening all the time. So this kind of disruption to supply chain, disruption to buying patterns, disruption to availability of some raw materials is causing all sorts of problems. And the best way you can deal with a lot of that is by carefully looking at the data, having the data of what's physically going on on a moment by moment basis. And that applies to all aspects of your yeah, your manufacturing and your supply chain. So I'm, I'm getting that nice picture of, of fluctuations on the supply side and on the demand side that you're, you're using data, you're gauging which products to manufacture and what quantities, where to ship them. What about the product development itself? I mean, using this data to, to start saying we need to be in category X or we need to enhance and have variations of product Y uh, that we didn't anticipate. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because that's really where the innovation comes from, right? And, and, and manufacturers saying, I can get ahead of the curve because I know certain products are going to be in demand. And I don't think that's really changed. That's always been the case of, you know, if you can find the right niche for your products and how you're going to develop and develop in the marketplace, mm-hmm. or if you can predict or develop a new way of doing business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you look at some of what the digital transformation side of things, look at the service-based uh, add-ons to physical products. Yeah, and then it, some of that started with the um, aero engines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the renting uh, hours of flight time as opposed to buying an engine. Yeah, that's the, the typical example of that transition from physical product purchases to services. Yeah, the more you can innovate in terms of uh, identifying where there's a niche, where there's a need, yeah. and or ways of doing business differently, then you're going to win. And that hasn't really changed. That's always been the case throughout the life cycle. And I think if you go to yeah, Harvard, you go and do your MBA or whatever else. Yeah, they will always talk about innovation and talk about how you're finding that appropriate niche. And I don't think that's really changed. I don't think the current marketplace and COVID and other things, it may have changed the cycle time for innovation. I think we're seeing mm. things changing faster, but I don't think it's really changed the fundamental facts around you know, how you win in a marketplace. That's a great advice. And, and, and Martin, you know, I'm labeling and, 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 and crowning you the digital trailblazer in manufacturing. Um, you got all this good concepts around industry 4.0 and digital transformation. You know, if I'm an emerging leader, I'm an aspiring leader, what I call a digital trailblazer working in manufacturing, what's some of the advice you would give them? Uh, I, I think I'd say always focus on the customer first. So, you know, talk about digital transformation. It's customer driven. You know, how can you add value? How can you make the customer's life easier? And that then translates into how you do things differently in your business and how you deliver more value. And then secondly, I would say, look at the data. How can you drive your business through the use of data? And if you think about you know, Industry 4.0, really it's about turning live data from your equipment into real-time information to make decisions and improve your processes. And those can be manual decisions or they could be automated. It could be through machines deciding to adjust your manufacturing process on an automated basis. It could be robots uh, with vision systems looking at what they're doing. It could be safety systems identifying risks around a product or something else that's then shutting a machine down. It could be any of those aspects. All of it though comes down to data in some form or other and using that data to make better decisions. That then drives 
your improvements in your business, which then drives those customer values and what the customer values coming out the other end. Yeah, Martin's great advice because, you know, I think about uh, CIOs working in manufacturing and I'm going to visit the plant and the factories and so forth. But what you're saying is do that plus go out and visit your customers, go see how they're using your products and services, rethink what how data is going to play into uh, gaining an edge around that. I think that's really sound advice. Uh, Martin, thank you for joining uh, this episode of the Driving Digital Stand Up. Where can people find you? So. Um, check out our website, donelmassociates.com. That's donelm, D-U-N-E-L-M, associates.com. Um, and, and check us out on Twitter as well. You can check me out, MC Davis 10 on Twitter. Um, thank you, Isaac. It's been a great chatting with you. Great chatting with you. Hope to see you soon.